Hello! So today I am doing my four month check in after my gastric bypass surgery. Woohoo! I have survived four months. It has been an eventful month. So the last day I checked in um, was just before I was leaving for Arizona for um, my daughter's wedding. And whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it was too soon to travel. I think, I don't know how long it is best to wait after having gastric bypass surgery before you travel. But let me tell you, it brought up a lot of issues. Because normally when I go on a road trip, the convenience store is my best friend. And Burger King and Taco Bell and Cinnabons. <gasps> I just wanted candy, 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 candy. And it was just like my butt being in the seat of the car made me feel like I needed candy. And so um, I learned some tough lessons. I um, found out that if I eat too much candy with artificial sweeteners in it, I get some serious diarrhea. That is not fun. And at first, it took me a while to figure it out because at first I thought it was associated with riding in the car so long, which makes sense if I'm eating a lot of candy while I'm riding in the car. Um, so after we arrived to Arizona, I just had horrible diarrhea. And it got better while I was there because I wasn't eating as much. Um, there was one day, oh, the cravings were so bad and we were going to Walmart a lot. We stayed in, uh, we have a timeshare, so we stayed in, a, it's like a one bedroom apartment. And um, so we had a kitchen where we could prepare all of our food. But this one day we went to Walmart and I was like, oh, I want Twizzlers so bad. And um, so my husband said, well, just get some and you can have a bite and then give the rest to Esther Lynn, our four-year-old granddaughter. And I said, okay. And I was like, since he suggested it, it's not my fault. I'm not being bad. And um, so we got home and um, my daughter and her family, they were busy doing preparations for the wedding. So we didn't go over right away. So I ate one Twizzler. It was good. And it did not make me sick. And um, I wasn't feeling fabulous, you know, from the traveling. And so I was like, well, I'll have another one. And I was sneaky. I was being very sneaky and getting them. Before you knew it, I had eaten three fourths of the package of Twizzlers. Yeah, that is not good. And I got so sick. And my husband was so frustrated with me just because he doesn't like to see me suffer. And that is not what he had wanted me to do with the Twizzlers. So by the time it it was time for us to go over to see my daughter and her family. I was too sick. I was so, so sick. I didn't get out of bed for the rest of the day or night. And I ended up vomiting the Twizzlers and um, it was so gross. It was all liquid and it tasted like snow cone syrup at, without the snow cone. And then it felt like I needed to do some more, but the liquid was already gone. And so it was like just this dry stuff stuck in my stomach and esophagus and it wouldn't come up. And it gives you like this whole body sick feeling. <sighs> so I learned a very, very hard lesson and I will not be having candy again. Um, that trip, having all those artificial sweeteners and that experience triggered my eating disorders. I have a history of eating disorders from middle school. So when I was 12, my mom and my PE teacher did an intervention um, because I was five foot nine and 117 pounds, which part of my brain is saying, well, that's amazing if you're a supermodel, but honestly, that is underweight. It is not healthy. And um, I do have a lean build when I am thin and healthy, but 5'9 is a big girl. I am never gonna be a tiny petite little girl. 
And it's always been hard for me because my mother is only five foot two. Now that she's 80, she's like five feet tall or something like that. I have two daughters. One of them is five two and one of them is five six. And um, yeah, on my mom's side of the family, actually I think my mom was five four once upon a time. Anyway, still a lot shorter than me. That's five inches shorter than me. And her sister's shorter than her and her mom was shorter than her. And um, I have always been surrounded by women that are shorter than me. And then I married a Mexican and all of his sisters are tiny and petite. And I remember one time we went to Mexico and I wanted one of the dresses that the indigenous women wore. It's actually a skirt and a blouse, but I just thought they were absolutely gorgeous. My husband's family thought I was crazy, but I really, really wanted one. And I went into a store to try to buy one. And um, they looked at me like I was crazy. And they're like, we don't carry your size. And I tried buying shoes in Mexico once. Um, and these, these experiences, I was young and not really that. Um, and my feet, <laughs> yeah, I wear a size nine and a half or a 10. And I have the same experience at the shoe store that um, they're like, I'm sorry, we don't carry your size. And they weren't calling me a fat cow, but that's the message that I received. So I started with anorexia in middle school. By the time I was 19, it was full on bulimia. Um, and then by the time I was in my 30s, it was binge eating. And um, I thought I had all of that under control. I thought it was all conquered. But when you have gastric bypass surgery, your food is so restricted and so limited. There are so many things that I cannot eat because they make me sick. And it's really, really hard. I've almost cried a couple times over this month because it's like, I just want to eat whatever I want. And it is frustrating. It's very hard and very frustrating. So, um, and to be completely honest, I have never in my 47 years of looking for therapists found someone that I felt was really helpful with eating disorders. They always want to go back to abuse that I suffered as a child. And um, I don't want to go into that story and I don't want you thinking any bad thoughts about my family. Um, but that was frustrating to me because when I wanted to deal with that, I would go to the therapist for that. But when I wanted to deal with my eating disorders, I would like a therapist to work with me on that. Fortunately, I have a friend that's an art therapist and she has volunteered to do a 10 week program with me over Zoom. And so, cross your fingers. I'm really hoping that that works for me and helps get me through this. Um, I was looking for a therapist. I found one that's kind of possible. I, I really take an energetic approach. Well, first I wanna know, do they treat eating disorders? Second, do they take my insurance? And then third, when I look at their picture, what kind of feeling do I get about them? And so I have one person that I may call, um, but for now I'm gonna start with the art therapy because it's, it's really scary and really hard for me. So I wanted to share that with you and a part of me is like really judging myself. It's like, why are you being so negative? And I'm not trying to be negative, I'm trying to be real. Um, yeah, so this month has been hard. The wedding was absolutely gorgeous. Um, I had a lot of conf conflicting feelings about traveling during COVID. I have a bunch of underlying illnesses that I've talked about a lot. And so it's just really, really, really scary. And then we got back to Utah and COVID is worse than ever here in Utah, like it is um, in a lot of places in the United States. So we're back to quarantining and um, that's really hard because people are like, well, you went to the wedding and I'm like, well, you know, that's a special case because that was my daughter and um, your kids don't get married that many times. And so my daughter is very important to me, so I needed to support her. So the next thing I wanna talk about is Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was hard for two reasons. Number one, the quarantine. I miss my family. I just wanna be with my family. But it was just me, Antar, our two dogs and our cat. And so that was hard. And then 
um, what do you do for food, right? So I decided I could do the green bean casserole. Um, it was delicious. I love green bean casserole. It does turn out, excuse me, the French fried onions raised my blood sugar. I've been, yeah. So if I ever make green bean casserole again, I'm going to use regular onions, not the fried onions. And I'll probably like, you know, caramelize them in a frying pan first. Um, and then I think that would be much healthier for me. Um, and then I made this amazing stuffing. I will try to share the recipe with you guys. I'm not sure how to do that. Um, <laughs> but this amazing stuffing, it called for cauliflower instead of bread. So, so good. Guess what? The secret to good stuffing is not bread. It's the herbs. I never knew. It was so, so good. And I made, um, I finally, on Facebook for years, I've been seeing these rest, um, bacon wrapped turkeys. And so I finally tried it this year and it was really, really good too. I was very happy with it. And my dog Max was very happy with it because I gave him all the skin off of the turkey. <laughs> um, but yeah, we wasted most of it because it's just the two of us and I can barely eat anything and my husband doesn't really like turkey. So I don't know if I'm ever gonna cook a turkey again. We'll see. We might go for ham instead. I haven't tried ham since my surgery. Um, so going back to the blood sugar, I had an amazing day when I went to see my endocrinologist. I was hoping for an A1C of seven and I got an A1C of 5.6. That is normal, you guys. I cried when they told me. I was just so overcome. I was like, that is like the best news. <sighs> it is so great. So I wish that meant that I don't have diabetes. It just means that it's well controlled because I still have my insulin pump and See, it's one pump. Oh, which I, yeah. Apparently I needed to give myself some insulin. <laughs> so I think we can now say I am a controlled diabetic, but anytime I eat something I shouldn't, or um, if I don't feel good, my blood sugar goes up. So things that I've learned that I can't have I cannot have sweet potatoes because they raise my blood sugar. Um, well, what else was it? Dang it. Can't give you a list because that's all I can remember right now. Let's talk about my weight. Oh my gosh. So this morning I weighed in at 161.8 pounds, which means I have lost, let's see, hold on. Come on, brain. It's about 70 pounds. Let's just say that because I can't do math right now. <laughs> I've lost approximately 70 pounds. I use an app called Renfo that I got um, their scale. I ordered it off of Amazon just because it looked like a nice digital scale. It came with this really cool app and the app tracks my BMI and my body fat and all this stuff. And so my BMI is down to 24, which that, um, uh, that's a 10, what do you call it? Point, 10 point drop. So you have to have a BMI of 35 to get the surgery. And my BMI was 34 the day of surgery. And today it is 24. That is amazing. Um, so my current weight is 161.8. So that puts me well into my healthy weight range. Um, so if I wanted to stop losing weight, I could, <laughs> I'm analyzing that in my brain because I, I guess I, my body's going to do what my body wants to do. Right. Um, so I have 28.1% body fat. And my metabolic age is finally the same as my chronological age. It is 49. 
So I'm very, very excited about that. Um, the one thing that is not great is my waist to hip ratio. And apparently that's um, something you look at for health factors. I'm still storing too much of my fat around my midsection. And it's not just because I had four kids. Um, so my waist right now, hold on, is 20, no, I was gonna say 24 inches, I wish. No, not really. Even when I was skinny, it was 28. So my waist right now is 35 inches, okay? So um, I would like to lose seven more inches off of my waist. And my hips are 38 inches. So I guess that number is too close together. They should be farther apart. Um, let's see, what else can I tell you? My waist though, I have lost nine and a half inches off my waist. So that's not too shabby in four months. And I have lost eight and a half inches off my hips. I've lost three quarters of an inch off my wrist. I have lost two and a quarter inches off my forearm right here. Um, I have lost five inches off my thigh and six inches off my chest. And yep, so those are all great. And it's only really been four months. So this month, it took me a whole month to lose 10 pounds, which that kind of stressed me out too because before it was coming off a lot faster. And I guess that's normal, I haven't really asked as you get closer to your goal weight for the weight loss to slow down. I think that's a good thing because there was at one point I was kind of scared that what if I can't slow this down because I don't want to get underweight again. Um, I have not been underweight in many, many, many years, but I guess it's still a legitimate fear, right? So um, I was trying to see. So yeah, like my first week I lost eight pounds. My second week I lost 12 pounds. And then it was three pounds, four pounds, two pounds, one pound, five pounds, five pounds, two pounds, three pounds, one pound, six pounds. Then I gained a little bit. And then this month, I honestly have not been tracking that well because of the depression. So actually there were three weeks out of the month that I did not even weigh myself. Well, two of them were because I was out of town and one of them is just because I was feeling the blues. So, um, yeah, it took me a month to lose 10 pounds now, this time. My goal weight is 136. Anything under that would be considered underweight for me. So um, to get there, I only need to lose 25 pounds. So 25 pounds isn't that bad. And if I slow down, that's okay. And even though I know everything I'm saying is true, the eating disorder stuff in my brain is really messing with me. It's really, really messing with me. <sighs> yeah. So now I'm trying to focus on exercise, I'm trying to focus on not eating things that make me sick or make my blood sugar go up. And I'm gonna start my art therapy, which I'm really, really excited about. And um, I hope some of this information is helpful for you guys that are considering this. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful December because the next time I talk to you about this topic anyway, <laughs> um, we will have celebrated Christmas already. So I hope you have very happy holidays. Bye-bye.